the pirates. All right, you son of a... Miles begins as Franklin opens the portal and dives to the side to dodge a fastball pitch of an unholy screaming cacophony of energy that resembles plasma bundled into a hundred skulls and thrown. A Nagasha blitzes out of the portal and as Franklin slams it shut to cut her in half, there's a shaking sound and it stabilizes despite him. She's aware, she's pissed and she's taking the fight right to them. The Arumenta scream in undiluted terror and run as fast as they can. Clearly this woman is one of the heads of the slavers, if not the head. What? Who dares? She begins before catching both Ryu and Lu's swords on either side with her Kutha metal cybernetic arms. Men? Men have been intercepting my adepts. I need to give them an extra... They don't let her finish her rant as Marcus drives his knife into her tail. She screams in a fury and thrashes out of the portal before her distraction causes it to collapse. The woman is a deep crag Nagasha, with enough cybernetic arms to pose as a desert Nagasha. She's also diving into Greater Plains Nagasha tradition, with enormous Kutha piercings. The massive Nagasha then screams again as Franklin focuses and drives the obscene number of broken Kutha piercings into her underside with a gesture then rips them out just as quickly. He's forced to dip to the side to avoid a nearly invisible blade of sheer wind that cuts into the floor beyond him. This world will burn. I will put its people into... She begins to scream and Miles hip fires with his revolver and her head rocks back as he gets her right between the eyes. Then she leans forward with a glare as the shards of the bullets and drops of blood fall out of her wound. Did you think I would be so... A quintet of follow-up shots hammer into her forehead and she starts slapping at herself in reaction. Her tail shakes and a concussive wave knocks everyone back into the surrounding walls and Jean-Luc into his munitions room. Thankfully, he stores his toys with the blast caps off and in secure containers when they're the touchier formulas. Take the bitch down, Miles commands as Jake and Victor grab onto the Nagasha's tail and slam her against a wall with their prodigious strength followed up by Marcus, Lou, and Ryu rushing in to try and slice into the bitch, but her cybernetic arms grab the blades and hold them steady. Make a path! sigh bellows, and all five men pinning the Nagasha back away fast and hard, allowing the Indian man to open up with an automatic shotgun. The solid slugs slow and stop in mid-air as the utterly furious Nagasha glares him down before turning to stop the approach of utterly silent machine gun fire courtesy of Beck. Two hands raise up and the sniper fire from Miles slows and stops in mid-air. Fuck me. Miles remarks with his eyebrows up. I'll be peeling your face off first, you. The Nagasha starts to threaten before visibly panicking and writhing around the warping Franklin who tries to grab her with a glowing hand. What are you doing to the Axiom? No, Franklin answers as his feet hit the wall first and he launches off it after her and she vanishes to reappear nearby as her attempt to warp is thwarted by Franklin crushing the Axiom in his grip and compressing it to critical mass. The null crashes from his fist and slams into the Nagasha with the force of a runaway train. The lights go out above as the local technology takes a heavy hit from the scrambling axiom, even as the nearly microscopic amount of null is quickly worn away. Is that it? Jean-Luc asks, emerging from his munitions room holding a chunk of shape C4 with an impact blast cap on a stick. Clearly the man has ideas. It could be. Knocked her the fuck out at least. Franklin notes calmly. Hey, Jean-Luc, how fast can you put a remote triggered bomb together? Miles asks, after digesting the fact that the lights are actually starting to flicker back on. Why? It may be safer to just shoot the bitch, but she may have important information. But I'm not letting a high-end Axiom Adept slither around to cause hell. Can you get a bomb collar up and running? Give me a bit, but I'll need Frankie Boy to work up a way to keep it on her despite Axiom bullshit. Jean-Luc answers, ducking back into the room. That I can do, 
but it will be as the axiom resettles so we'll have seconds at most if she's a light sleeper, Franklin says as he begins to quickly gather up the now bloody shards of Kutha until he has a double handful of them. I'm not much for base level transmutation, but reshaping is easy. Then make it happen, I have questions, Miles says as he ensures that he's got a gun on the Nagasha at all times. Our communicators are down. We can't even tell the girls that there are beasts like this around. We can't just keep the null up if we want to be effective, Marcus says as he checks his comm. There's a bitter look on his face. He clearly doesn't like the idea of needing Axiom to be effective. Suck it up, soldier. We're not splitting up with teleporters dropping in, which leads the question as to why they're not dropping here, Miles asks without actually asking. Axiom's still scrambled. We have maybe one more minute of normal. Jean-Luc, you have 30 seconds left, Miles barks. Don't rush Art, the Frenchman shouts back in a rage. Ten seconds later, he emerges with what looks like a backpack and a radio. He quickly races up to the still unconscious Nagasha and straps the bomb onto her. He punches in an activation sequence and nods. All right, this is slapdash as hell, but if she gets too far away from the radio, then boom is the name of the game. Franklin there better be a way to keep it on her. There is, but I need the axiom to settle to do it. Tell us when that is. I want to know the microsecond she has the potential to wake up, Miles says, and Franklin nods. All right now, Franklin says after a few moments, and the bloody kutha he's carrying flows out and settles around the backpack bomb mostly. There, I left part of it exposed to not interfere with the signal, but it's now attuned to her axiom aura. She won't be able to easily exclude it without accidentally leaving behind everything that isn't her body, and with her prosthetics and piercings, she won't be doing that. Axiom Aura, Victor asks. Aura, presence, personal disruption of the energy field that you contribute to by merely existing. There are several ways to describe it. Franklin answers, and Beck starts snickering. So before she wakes up, is anyone calling dibs? Beck asks, and everyone glances over at him and his shit-eating grin. What? It's a legitimate question. Our first run in with slavers and we picked wives from among them and turned them to the cause of righteousness. Surely a second run in will be much the same as the first no. We've already stabbed and shot this one. I'm pretty sure that bridge is fairly thoroughly burned. Marcus notes as he examines his knife somewhat. Wrong. You stabbed and Miles shot this one. The rest of us failed pretty hard to do some damage. What am I, chopped liver? Franklin demands. Yes. Besides, as another Axiom freak show, you've got a chance of really connecting to her. Beck remarks and Franklin just stares at him. I'm 90% sure you're just fucking with me. Didn't you say that about your average conversation with me? Beck asks in an amused tone. Am I incorrect? Are you incorrect, are you? Can it people, she's waking. Miles orders and everyone goes silent and raises their weapons in response. Now then, little lady, you should first be informed that we've planted. Franklin turns and slams his fist into the face of a hyper-aggressive Aromenta, pouring through nothingness, and in the moment of distraction, the Nagasha is gone. The woman groaning in pain, even as her kutha piercings fall to the floor is shockingly loud compared to the rest of the hallway as the men stare. Franklin, can you trace where she went? That depends. Was there a delay on that bomb? He asks, looking to Jean-Luc, who shakes his head in the negative. Then yes, give me a moment. Oh my nose. What's even going on? Who are you people? The Araminta asks in shock and pain. Franklin sighs, grabs her nose and there's a glow from his hand, and she staggers back while taking a deep breath and then touching her face. There's a slight spattering of blood, but she's otherwise unhurt and clean. We're the ones that your soon-to-be former owners have picked a fight with, Franklin remarks before turning to the rest of the guys. All right, 
I can establish a connection, but this isn't going to be pretty. Just do it. The Null scrambled the local axiom. It's a lot harder to just rip open portals now. Franklin remarks even as he causes the area around him to start to waver and then pulls at it. Weapons are raised and pointed into the new portal with Jake and Victor going in first with their weapons up and ready. God damn, Jake mutters as he examines the area with bits of at least several alien women all over the place. It looks like a ship's bridge, but everything's been smashed to hell by the bomb and the considerably squishier people have been splattered. Please tell me I didn't accidentally make that woman into a kamikaze. Jean-Luc asks in a strained tone. I'm afraid so, Jake mutters as both Beck and Sai pile in themselves. Sai tries to wipe the gore off a computer and try to activate it as Beck checks the more intact bodies for signs of life. Just corpses, Beck says, moving from body to body. We've got power, though. Obviously, they didn't have time to log off. Sai remarks as he inputs a few commands. This is the fifth and furthest ship, apparently. I'm plotting a course to put it closer to Vuxa. Not gonna try to land it? Miles asks, stepping through himself. No, I'm not qualified for this, Sai answers. Miles' eyebrow goes up and he pulls up his communicator. Hello? Have you guys gotten the fifth ship under control? We think so. We were taking a pot shot and a cybernetically augmented Deep Crag Nagasha came out on the offense. We managed to knock her out and put a bomb on her to assure cooperation, but she slipped away before we could get a question out of her and, and she then painted the bridge of the fifth ship with her innards. Feeling nauseous? Agenda coos at him and Miles rolls his eyes. We're on the job. We'll feel crappy later. Right now, my big concern is how the hell do I explain to Admiral Cistern that we accidentally turned an enemy combatant into a suicide bomber? Miles remarks as Beck stands up. Nothing but bodies. Six women. Various races. No trace of the facial piercings. I think we just did an accidental decapitation strike. Beck remarks, walking around. Well, not to say they were using these heads if they thought attacking a system without scouting it properly was a good idea. They might have scouted it a few months ago. Most worlds go through long periods of stagnation, only changing if an outside force acts upon them. Like us, Agenda says over Miles' communicator. Right, makes sense. Sai, can you get this thing into at least a stable orbit around Vuxa and then kill its engines? Put in a password or something or scramble their ability to leave, Miles asks. And Sai shrugs. I can move the ship from here, but I'll need administrator access if I'm going to be keeping people out of the system. And whoever it is whose blood is on this thing clearly wasn't trusted to that level. She must have been trusted to some level, though. She's lacking the Kutha piercings designed to keep her under control. Maybe those are just to keep heavy Axiom users down? We don't know. Franklin answers. What do you think, kiddo? Were those nasty piercings falling out of you just to keep the more powerful Axiom adepts in line? What? You what? Not really an answer that, Franklin notes. Miles, try getting into the captain's quarters on that ship. She'll no doubt have some kind of monologue if you encountered something unique. These types of girls have massive egos and tend to record their boasting. Agenda offers and Miles nods. Right then, how are things going on your end? We've sieged out two ships with boarding parties and have broken the engines of a third. Ah, so us boys only got two of the five ships. Pity. Miles jokes as he gestures for everyone to form up on him. Yes, we'll have to look into exactly what the winner is entitled to. Later. After we secure the win, we can talk about prizes, but for now, make sure the win's a win, okay, love? You got it. Have your fun, dear. We've got a cabin to raid, Miles says, turning off the communicator. Jake, you, Marcus, and Sai will be here keeping the bridge secure and steering the ship as best you can. Everyone else but Franklin and Victor with me. Those two are keeping the portal open, understand? Sir. Yes, sir. 
The men bark out as Beck, Lou, Ryu, and Jean-Luc form up around Miles with their weapons ready. Mostly shotguns, but at the close and range of a starship's corridors, there isn't much call for longer range. Wrong door, Sai says all of a sudden. What? It's connected to the main bridge. You need to go that way. The quarters of the captain, first mate, and other high rankers are through that door, Sai says, pointing to the door opposite of the one they were forming up on. Oh, all right then. From the top, boys, form up. Miles jokes and there are some good-natured snorts of amusement. 